This video demonstrates how to use a log to file command to log some of the data from our data table into our CSV file. Now that we have created our if function, we want to log the data into our CSV file whenever the bot identifies a row of data for our state. Since we set our if function to look for the state of main, the code below will extract the data only when the bot identifies a row for main. This new log to file command should be within the if statement on line 23 of the bot code. We can see the line that we're adding it to if we went to the list view and scroll down and see that we're currently on line 22, so we would be adding the action to line 23. I'll stay in the flow view for just a little bit longer. To find the log to file menu, go ahead and first collapse our if menu and then navigate down on the actions menu until you come to log to file. Go ahead and expand it by clicking once and then move the log to file option onto our menu. If it goes out of place, recall again, it's very easy to um, reconfigure where this is placed on our workbench by just clicking and dragging it up into our if statement. Now we have to configure our log to file command. So we can go ahead and first tell the bot where it can find the CSV file that we'd like it to write the data into. And then we can start entering the text into our log box and select variables. Unlike writing our header row, we're going to use variables to write our data from our data table into our CSV file. The reason for using variables becomes clear when we think about the entire process that the bot is performing at this point. The bot is looping through our data table one row at a time. Each time the bot finds the S state variable to be main, the bot is then going to write the data for that row into our CSV file. We use the variables to allow the bot to find a new value for each variable each time a new row of data is identified as being from the state of main. To enter the variables, we use the x in parens, and we click once, and then we can choose our variable. Recall that our first column of data is going to be our record ID, so we want to go ahead and click on the s record ID, and then click on Yes, insert. Since we're writing into a CSV file, we denote that the next value should go into another column by entering a comma. We then can go ahead and enter in our order ID. So we would go ahead and click on our X in a parens, find our order ID, and then go ahead and click on insert. We're going to repeat that process to enter in our data for the year, remembering to put a comma in between each of the values that we'd like to be in a new column. The next variable is going to cause us a little bit of a challenge. As we can see, what we're doing in this box is we're entering text to log. Our next variable that we're going to want to grab is our quantity, and we save that in an n quantity or number quantity variable. So if we were to click on our x, we would not find the n quantity as one of the options on our user-defined variable list. What we can do, however, is we can reference our quantity using the row record index that it is in. So we can go ahead and click on R for row and then select the number three because our quantity is in the third index or the fourth column and then we can go ahead and click yes insert. We then can go ahead and grab our price variable because remember in the interim step we did create an s price string variable but when it comes again to the subtotal tax and total columns we again have to use our our row references to put those in. So go ahead and select our row variable. Our subtotal value is in the seventh index, so we can go ahead and type in the number seven and then click yes, insert. We can repeat that process to grab our tax value, which is in index number eight or column nine. And then we can go ahead and grab the row reference for our total which is in index number nine or column 10. 
Our last string variable that we do have access to is our state. We like to write our state in to make sure that we know that we have grabbed data for the state that we have asked the program to grab it for. And then finally, we're going to create a new variable. This new variable is going to end up being the undiscounted purchase price, which would be the the product that we obtain by multiplying the quantity times the price. Because a CSV file will largely act just like an Excel file, we can type in an Excel formula to automatically calculate the undiscounted purchase price. So we're going to begin with our equal sign. Then we're going to pick our quantity, which again, remember, we got that by dealing with our row reference, and it's in index number three. And then we're going to enter in our star, and then we're going to select our S price variable. We don't really have to worry that this is being written out as text because once it gets into the CSV file, it will automatically convert it into numbers when it looks like numeric data. We can go ahead and make sure that we maintain our append to existing log file option and that we leave our coding as ANSI. Once we've done this, we can go ahead and click apply and then we can click on save.